Uh, welcome to Improving the Bottom Line, Energy Savings for Fergus Falls Businesses. Uh, my name is Melissa Birch. I'm with the Clean Energy Resource Teams. We are going to record this for those who um, aren't able to make it this morning. Um, the, the program will um, help you save money on your energy costs uh, through a variety of different programs that are available uh, to businesses and organizations in the Fergus Falls area. Um, if you haven't, please put your name and organization in the chat and any questions that you have can also go into the chat uh, and we'll have Q&A at the end. Um, with that, I think I will hand it off to uh, Lisa Workman, who is the president of the Fergus Falls Chamber of Commerce, uh, to talk about their chamber office renovation project. Lisa? Okay, I'm mute. Got that figured out, the whole unmute button. Um, thank you, Melissa. Um, yeah, so we, we were happy to be a part of sharing information and one of the reasons that we wanted to do that was because we took advantage of some of the programs through Otter Tail Power when we renovated our building in 2018 and uh, creating an efficient space for our staff and volunteers, both energy efficient as well as use of space was one of the reasons that we went through with um, a renovation. It was a long-term project. Um, we also wanted to enhance the image of our business community, spark some downtown riverfront development, and then highlight the river walk and the Otter Tail River. So behind me out the window is the river. So we have a, a view of that and taking advantage of that. Um, as you can see, this is the uh, photo of our building just to give you some perspective. Um, it was built in 1955 and not much had been done to it until 2018. So kind of a it was, it was sad. You can go ahead there. Some of the things that we wanted to address when it came to efficiencies and especially energy wise um, were things like our lovely portable air conditioning unit that did not cool hardly anything, um, but used a lot of electricity. Uh, the middle picture is, is our heating system and yeah, it was kind of just scary down there. And then the bottom is our favorite picture of the electrical cords that I'm sure any fire inspector would not approve. Um, our building is small, it's 20 by 50, and we were spending over $600 a month in the winter heating this small building, and we only were heating one level. So when we went through the renovation, um, we took energy efficiency into uh, high consideration because we wanted to uh, take advantage of Otter Tail Power's uh, rebates when it came to different things. Uh, we at, used all LED lighting. We added insulation. So we had an, our building was at an R1 value and we went to an R15. And then part of that too was to uh, install the air source heat pump, which has been just super for us, literally cut our heating bill in half in the winter time. And we have air conditioning, full central air conditioning throughout the building. Um, on a day like today, I might have my windows open till about noon, but I, I will be turning them off after that since, since we're going to have 80 on the first day of fall. So um, it was a great program, easy to work with for, for us, saved us some, it's saving us money down the road as well as um, saving, you know, to, taking advantage of those rebates. So that's just a little snapshot of what we did and what we took advantage of, even on our small little project. So it's really any size project that can take advantage of some of the incentives. And if you want more information, that's how you can reach me. There's the after picture of the building too. So we had quite quite a drastic, dramatic change from what the appearance looked like too. I need to go for a walk on the river. That looks terrific. Yeah. And oh, and we have a patio out there. So bring your lunch. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, our next speaker is Brandon Johnson, who is with Otter Tail Power. He's the senior commercial and industrial representative for the Fergus Falls area. Uh, and with him is also Lori Moxness, uh, also from Otter Tail Power.
Sorry, having some technical difficulties here. The screen disappeared. Of course. Maggie, do you want to just share what you have? Of course. Sorry about that. Oh uh, yeah, Brandon with the Otter Tail Power. Also with me is Lori Moxness. Uh, so the Otter Tail kind of has a history of really being supportive of communities and their customers and growth in both. So the, we have a, a lot of different opportunities and programs that we offer to customers. There's uh, a few other uh, of our team here that Lori and I have similar roles where we're out in the communities helping customers with questions or programs, uh, helping them find energy savings opportunities, uh, any kind of rebates that we can help them with, um, kind of walk hand in hand um, through them with that. So Otter Tail being an investor owned utility, we have customers in three different states, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota. Uh, Lori and I are both in Minnesota here. Um, almost 132,000 customers. So we have a very big customer base. Um, there is a slight difference in kind of the programs that we have throughout the three different states, just based on the utility commission oversight. But, um, but yeah, so our focus, Lori and my focus here is in, in Minnesota. Uh, so Ottertail has the, the focus of 30-30-30 at this point. Um, we're on pace to do all three. Uh, so the goal is to have a 30% renewable energy profile with the uh, recent news of the Hoot Lake plant uh, solar, but recom or, uh, sorry, Hoot Lake plant uh, shutting down and then putting a solar array there. Um, we're on pace to hit 35% of our uh, energy profile to be renewable. So we do have a lot of customers that have a focus in that um, or that want to have a, a renewable profile for their business as well. So they can actually use our power to, uh, to help meet their goal, which is kind of cool. And then uh, the, the rates, um, having 30% lower rates than the nationwide average, we have, um, very, very good rates. So our goal is to help keep it that way. So we, we do that through um, our energy efficiency programs, our load management programs, investments, um, and different technologies. So here's the um, kind of where we're trending with our CO2 emissions. Um, so we're on pace, we're doing good um, with the help of the customers taking part in our programs. We, we help moving that, or we help keep moving that forward. So thank you to them for uh, helping us with that. Um, and then as far as the conservation programs that we have, um, we follow it from a year to year basis from a calendar year. So every year we kind of started zero. Um, so like when Lisa and the chamber did their programs, we'll, we'll rebate them for efficient technologies. We'll claim savings, savings against our goal. Um, so it's kind of a win-win for the, uh, for both us and the customer. And then as far as load control or load management, um, can be dual fuel, can be water heater control, can be uh, air conditioning, cycling, um, all of which are meant to help the customer save energy and then uh, help us meet our efficiency goals. So kind of diving into the background of our program. So we call it the Conservation Improvement Program. Um, it's designed to encourage energy efficiency. It offers net savings to the customers. And then we have different categories within the, the, the program. And I kind of focused on some that would apply to smaller businesses more specifically. Um, lighting, HVAC, um, EV chargers are kind of coming and it's kind of a neat opportunity for a small business to do some easy branding if they wanted to look at an EV charger and an EV vehicle wrapped with their logo um, and I'll highlight kind of some of the benefits of what the EV offers, especially on um, some of our programs. So the first one in this, these are gonna be in order of kind of low hanging fruit. Um, if the company hasn't looked at LED lighting or hasn't done LED lighting, it usually offers very fast paybacks, uh, generally comes in partnership with an increase in light output. Um, offers some flexibility in the, the color of the light and the amount of light. 
Um, there's some other kind of cool things you can do with the lighting. If you have some very bright rooms that have a lot of windows, you can tie it with uh, some sensors that will actually dim the LEDs to the brightness that you want based on the amount of light you're getting from the outside. So kind of cool things, but generally offers a 50% savings. Um, sometimes more than that, sometimes a little less than that, but generally in that 50% range, uh, we rebate based on the wattage reduction. Kind of neat with the uh, generally the 50% savings, our rebates generally come in the like the 30 to 75% of project range. So we actually end up help paying, um, we help pay for a, a, a fair amount of the project. Um, and then they offer very short paybacks. Just to add to the lighting, um, Brandon, we also uh, rebate new lighting construction as well. This specifically talks about retrofit, which will be the case most of the time. But if anyone is considering new construction, we also rebate uh, new LED light installations at a very similar rate. Perfect. Thanks, Laura. Yep. Um, and then uh, two other things on here that we didn't mention, but are um, a little bit smaller projects. There's not usually a lot of them. We do offer other lighting rebates like uh, LED exit signs and occupancy sensors. So I guess just know those are out there. One more thing I would just add on the rebates is, especially when it comes to lighting, sometimes businesses might be a little strapped for cash. And so we do have the ability to allow the business owner to sign a third party release form in which the rebate can be paid directly to the contractor. So the business doesn't have to come up with that capital money up front and wait for their rebate to come six to eight weeks later. Um, we actually can pay the contractor and that sometimes helps some of the businesses that might be struggling a little bit financially um, to achieve some of these energy savings projects, uh, which will result in additional money savings for them in the future. Exactly. And the unique opportunity with COVID is a lot of, you know, with the businesses being empty, it's been a really good opportunity to get to these fixtures without having to relocate employees or reschedule meetings. Um, so kind of in a kind of in a backwards way, it offered a good opportunity. Um, uh, probably one of the the bigger programs that we have as far as impacts and um, really these last couple of years as rebates have started to change as our air source heat pump program. Um, they offer higher efficiencies than your standard air conditioner. They offer flexibility. They do both heating and cooling. Um, so you kind of get a benefit of both out of the thing. Um, in a lot of the homes and smaller businesses, um, so maybe some of the older homes that were built without air conditioning, a mini split offers a really good option because it doesn't require duct work. Um, and, and both the air source and the mini split systems are very high efficiency. Um, we've, we're seeing now uh, mini split and heat pump systems that'll go down well into the below zeros, which has always been a concern with people. Is it gonna, is it gonna heat, my, heat my place in the coldest weather? And, and they're really coming along. Um, and our rebates really focus on the cold climate models, which, um, generally can can do those zero or below zero kind of heating scenarios. Um, there is kind of two paths that our heat pump rebates take and it, it has to do with some of the um, regulatory things behind our program, but replacing natural gas or having existing gas, a uh, natural gas and not kind of sends us down two different paths of this program. Um, we don't encourage switching fuels, but um, we can rebate in scenarios. So for the, if, if you're replacing natural gas, we do have to have the, or we do want to put the, uh, the heat pump on, on our dual fuel program that does offer tremendous benefits to the customer because we have discounted electric rates through that program, which will be on the next slide. Um, so they ended up getting a reduced uh, heating and cooling rate. And then, um, now if you want to go back to the slide there, if you if you're not replacing natural gas and um, kind of with the end of life scenarios too, if the system is really old, 
it offers some flexibility. So maybe we just talk more about that on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but, um, and then the rebates for, for replacing an electric source or a fuel oil source or a propane source um, come in at $900 a ton for the ducted as long as it meets the SEER and the HSPF rating, which is the seasonal energy efficiency rating and the heating um, seasonal performance factor, basically the cooling and the heating ratings. Um, so what we're finding is after the rebates, our heat pumps actually come in at less of a cost than a standard air conditioner would, which is kind of cool. Um, They're far more efficient. And more efficient, yeah. So a lot of times they can get something more efficient in the end for less cost than what the, say an air conditioner would have cost. Um, and then especially on our dual fuel, but just with our electric rates in general, um, the heating becomes a very effective, uh, method so and cost effective on our dual fuel program um, it's kind of a cool program in that the customer would basically have two heating sources so one being our heat pump um, and then the other maybe a natural gas or maybe a propane some other kind of furnace or baseboard um, something other than an electric source and what that offers is the discounted electric rates so i have on there um, October through May, this, our small general service is a kilowatt hour rate of roughly 7.8 cents. On the dual fuel, it's only five. In the summertime where we're cooling, um, 9.7 cents, well, if on the dual fuel program, you can get the, the your cooling cost for 5.3 cents. Um, so roughly half price heating and air conditioning, which is a great benefit. Um, with that, the, the customer just wires in a separate service for their a separate electrical panel, basically. And we put the heat pump on that and then we separately metered it. Um, and then with the kind of just with our program in general, um, but maybe more heat, heat pump specific, we do offer low interest financing um, available for any efficiency project and the and one thing with this is it's it's an either or you can either get the financing or the rebate with the exception of heat pumps you can do both but we can uh, we can in or we can uh, loan up to 80 percent of the, the total install so that's the unit the wiring the piping all of that good stuff um, and then um, you can kind of get that upfront capital to make the investment and then basically energy savings can help pay that back and that just goes as a that repayment just goes right on the electric bill. So the tie and together. We only offer that for commercial customers. We do not offer that currently for residential customers. I know this is a commercial meeting, but sometimes we're sitting in these things and we're thinking about our home as well. So just to sure. clarify, it is for businesses only. Yes, thanks, Laura. Yep. Um, so with, uh, with the EVs, and I mentioned it's kind of a unique opportunity. Um, uh, any kind of level to or or a higher charger, we can uh, we can rebate it at four hundred dollars. Um, generally, they don't cost too much more than that, so we almost buy the charger, and then um, we can put it on our vehicle charging rate. So I'll, the benefits there are uh, very low charging costs, um, non summer three cents a kilowatt hour during the summer months, even less than that. Uh, the customer basically gets 10 hours overnight charging. Uh, on the right-hand side is kind of a breakdown of what that EV would look like, so uh, or what that vehicle would look like. So if it was a gas-powered vehicle, is on the top there, um, 25 miles per gallon, two dollars and fifty cents a gallon, roughly 25 cent, or 25,000 miles a year, might cost you 2,500 dollars to have that uh, gas-powered vehicle. You buy that electric vehicle and you just wire it into your general service, which is on the bottom left there, with our rates and uh, charge in any time. Uh, you know, you might do that same that same uh, opportunity for five hundred and seventy dollars. You put that EV on our um, basically our off peak rate. Uh, you could drive that. You know, you might get that vehicle the whole year for three hundred dollars. So uh, very good opportunity. Very low rates. Um, and then, uh, you know, you get your electric vehicle, which is kind of uh, a replacement anyway, and then you pair it with our power profiles and um, just 
offers a lot of good opportunities for uh, green energy and efficient energy. Uh, water heating is another um, opportunity that the, a lot of these small businesses would have. Um, you can a rebit start at 90% efficient or uniform energy factor. Basically, a, the electric units are very efficient, so we don't have a hard time eating that. But um, at least 50 gallons would be where rebates would start. Um, to do the rebate, we just we put it on one of our um, one of our load control programs or rate savings opportunities. Is another way to look at that. So they can, if they have dual fuel, they can put it right on their dual fuel panel. Um, we do have a, a different, uh, just a monthly credit that customers can get. Um, so uh, that ends up being $8 a month, which covers a fair portion of the water heating costs. Um, and then if it's on a new controlled rate or new controlled service, um, so if it's new, not a new water heater, but new to energy management control, um, we can offer either 150 or $300 depending on the size and then if it's if they have a unit already on some kind of a, some kind of discounted rate or control, then it's just got to be 80 gallons or bigger. Some other things that the businesses might really want to think hard about, um, especially with their goals, if they have goals to be carbon neutral or have a carbon reduction goal, we do have a tailwinds program and basically they would subscribe to our wind power generation so they would actually buy renewable credits um, directly from our that are contributed directly from our wind farm so if they want to be 100 percent renewable but they don't have the means to do it within their building um, they can do it through their power bill and then uh, another really good opportunity which is actually ends up being free to the customer is our uh, cool savings program. So basically we, they would sign up through our program. Uh, we'd give them a $6 ton credit in this case in, on a commercial program. So if you have a, say a five ton air conditioner, we give you a $6 ton credit. So you get a $30 credit June, July, August, September. So it's a really easy way to reduce costs uh, on the electric bill with really no investment. Kind of a neat program. Um, the one thing I should mention with that is that um, if you're on dual fuel, we can't. It's it's got to be a unit that's not already on some kind of energy management program or dual fuel program. Um, but that's kind of the highlights. We offer a lot of other opportunities. I wanted to focus more on what would actually be applicable to kind of the targeted audience here. Um, but Lori, myself, or other uh, people in similar roles, we're happy to go meet with customers, discuss anything they want to discuss, if they want uh, billing review or uh, rebate opportunities, savings opportunities, um, general questions about Otter Tail. Um, that's kind of our, our role. So we're kind of out and about working with customers. So We also have some really good um, <clears throat> uh, audit uh, programs that if buildings just don't really know what they need, but they need some help trying to figure that out. We have some great programs that can help businesses determine what should they be doing at their facility to save energy and make their buildings more energy efficient. And those are things we can talk about more on a one on one basis. So, yeah, thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Brandon and Lori. Uh, our next speaker is Peter Lindstrom. He's the manager of public sector and community engagement at the Clean Energy Resource Teams. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And Brandon and Lori, that was fantastic. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a financing program called Property Assess Clean Energy over the next 10 minutes or so. But before I do that, I just want to uh, say that four of us this morning are from an organization called the Clean Energy Resource Teams. We're a statewide organization. Uh, we have a very straightforward mission to help communities, businesses, farms, uh, individuals get clean energy projects completed across the state. Next slide, please. So um, next slide. 
A little bit about property assessed clean energy. As I mentioned, this is a way for, for businesses, nonprofits, multi uh, housing providers, really anybody except residential at this point to do energy efficiency projects or renewable projects um, and have it paid for as an assessment on their property tax bill. Uh, next slide. So there's, uh, there's uh, uh, been about uh, 250 or so projects completed across the state. You can see the, the counties in green are PACE eligible counties and Otter Tail is, uh, is uh, eligible. So any businesses, any business or nonprofit uh, faith community uh, within Otter Tail, uh, the, the county of Otter Tail um, can participate in property assessed clean energy. Next slide. So uh, lots of projects completed so far. Golly, uh, over a hundred million at this point worth of projects completed. Lots of savings uh, as has already been demonstrated this morning. Um, these projects uh, can save a lot of money and uh, save a lot of energy and as um, uh, uh, an additional benefit is that they help create jobs in the region as well. Next slide. So there's two public entities that um, administer PACE programs across the state. One is called the Rural Minnesota Energy Board and they're, they're just in the southern southwest part of Minnesota. And the second is um, an entity called the St. Paul Port Authority. That's actually where the financing comes from. And the St. Paul Port Authority has an agreement with the with Otter Tail County uh, to do this um, to do this project. the the uh, The role of the county is to collect the property taxes and then the assessment as well, and 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 pass on the assessment to the St. Paul Port Authority. There's a few commonalities, no matter what your what program you're talking about. First of all, there's a maximum amount that can be loaned out. And uh, uh, that maximum is 20% of the assessed value of your property. So if, you're, if your business um, is valued at uh, $100,000, the maximum loan would be $20,000. It's gotta be a good business. Uh, you gotta be up on all your uh, federal, state, local taxes. Um, and uh, and uh, there's an application process. Um, it's about a five or six page application, uh, name, rank, serial number information. Uh, the loan is typically, the term is typically 10 years and the interest rate is four and a quarter percent fixed. 4.25 fixed over a 10 year term is uh, typical. It can be up to 20 years. So a little bit about the project process. Uh, good news for folks in your region is that uh, Otter Tail County already has this in place, so you're good to go there. As I mentioned, you submit a, a short application. You do need to get lender consent if there's a mortgage on your property. Um, typically, that's, that's not a problem. Uh, you submit three years worth of financials on your business. The, the St. Paul Port Authority has a credit committee that reviews these applications on, on a monthly basis. And, and so you'll hear back uh, very quickly whether or not you're approved or not. Typically they are. And then again, um, as, well, as uh, what Brandon mentioned, um, you can use the savings to help pay the assessment. And that's, that's very common uh, for these property assessed clean energy projects is that you have an energy audit first. That's an important component. So you call up Brandon or Lori and you, you get scheduled for that audit. And uh, the auditor will say, hey, if you change out your lights, your HVAC system, put in some insulation, you'll save 10 grand a year, for example. The assessment for PACE, the assessment will, will be lower. So save 10 grand, your assessment will be $8,000, for example. So it's cash flow positive for your business from day one. Next slide. So um, 
So uh, as has already been uh, demonstrated with, with Lisa, your $600 uh, a month uh, bill that you used to have um, has been cut and that's great. So lower your utility expenses it is an important part of these projects. Um, with PACE, uh, a unique part of PACE is that you, you save now when you get those new LED lights or insulation, whatever it might be, you don't make your first payment until the following year. So you save today uh, in September, you don't make your first payment until May 2021. It's pr so that's, that it, that's the case of whether it's an, an energy efficiency project uh, or a renewable project. Um, renewable is, uh, uh, has an added benefit in that you start saving today, you don't make your first payment until May 2021. Uh, but you also get the 26% federal tax credit as well in between that time. So, um, so the, the savings look, uh, look very good. Next slide, please. So uh, our advice at CERTS is always to call your utility um, that when you're starting to think about these projects. So pick up the phone and, and call Lori, call Brandon. Um, and as they mentioned, they have a very good uh, energy audit program. There's a there's a few others um, that are out there as well that that uh, you can see listed on this slide. Next slide. So just a few case studies. This is the Blue Line Travel Center down in the, the southern part of Minnesota, just off I-90, and you can tell from um, this picture they have a ton of exterior lights. Uh, they had a hefty utility bill and wanted to get those lights replaced. So they took advantage of the PACE program down in Southern Minnesota. Uh, they also took advantage of their local utility rebates, Worthington Public Utilities. And they took advantage of a grant program that uh, my colleague Fritz is gonna talk about in a minute called REAP, Rural Energy for America program. And their, their, uh, the cost for this project, $74,000. Um, they're actually saving something like uh, two grand a month, so um, very, very significant savings for this business. Next slide. Uh, I like this quote um, from Deneen Pottery. Po Deneen Pottery, uh, the, the last thing any business wants to do is uh, spend a day uh, or a week or a month filling out a, a hefty application. Um, uh, this uh, owner says, hey, two payments a year, very simple. Um, interest rate, uh, very simple, and the entire process, um, uh, quite simple. Next slide. Space can also be used for new construction as well. Uh, there's, uh, there's been a change to the law last year. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the maximum is 20% of the assessed value. You can also use 20% of the appraised value. So if you're building a new hotel or uh, a new building, you can use um, uh, the appraised value of that, of whatever that hotel um, will be appraised at. So um, that's important to keep in mind as well. Next slide. The pace is a good fit, whether you're talking about you know, a, huge, a big hotel, a uh, new project, or, um, or an existing building, uh, a large business, small business, this is Paul's handyman service. Um, I imagine it's just Paul who's working there. And uh, uh, Paul utilized Pace for a $34,000, uh, fairly modest sized uh, solar array, 10 kW. And uh, similar to that other case study, you can see the quote from, from Paul. It was actually pretty easy. We sent in an application, they proved it, uh, pretty seamless. Important to note, uh, the business can um, hire whoever they wish to get the project completed. To get the funds from the Port Authority, they hire whoever um, to get the job done. Next slide, Maggie. This is uh, uh, in the northern part of the state, uh, on the other side of the state in Cook County, um, a hotel that, uh, that uh, uh, put in some solar and uh, they're saving um, seven grand a, a year. Pretty, pretty nice benefit for this hotel. Next slide. And again, in the uh, northern part of the state on, on the other side in Two Harbors, um, this is a vet clinic. Uh, and uh, 
a small solar array as well. And um, I do like this quote uh, from uh, the two vets here. It's practical, it's doable, truly good thing to do for your business, your community, and for our world. Next slide. So we have a ton of information on property assessed clean energy uh, on our website as well as a bunch of other information, of course, but uh, I encourage you to go to uh, cleanenergyresourceteams.org to learn more about Property Assessed Clean Energy. And that's me, and that's my colleague Fritz, who I, I believe is up next. I believe I am. Peter. Uh, Fritz Ebinger is the World Development Program Manager at CERTS, and he is indeed uh, up next, and he is somewhere <laughs> online. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, yes, I'm Fritz Ebinger. I'm here to talk to you about the energy programming for small business. Uh, the one thing I wanted to mention, well, Maggie's moving me right along. Um, go ahead and move to the next slide. This is fine. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, you know I am I am in tune with the realities of a lot of small businesses right now. There's a lot of uh, a lot of consternation and concern out there, and I don't want any of my messaging to come across as tone deaf. Uh, and I acknowledge that uh, we're all in a little bit of a different and difficult spot. So next slide, please. Not tone deaf. I'm going to talk to you quickly about uh, USDA REAP, the Rural Energy for America program. I'll talk to you about some of the tax matters that are advantageous for clean energy projects. And then just a couple of slides about jobs for fun. Uh, next, please. So as you heard Brandon and Lori and Lisa talk about, um, you always wanna do efficiency first. It's always gonna be your lowest cost option. Um, if you're thinking about a, re a renewable energy project, it's actually gonna reduce the renewable energy project as well because you're shrink shrinking your energy load profile. Um, it's also easier to finance, as you heard both uh, Pete and Brandon and Lisa talk about how uh, generally the rebating and the PACE programming is pretty seamless, and that's by design because it's, you know, a smart business is always going to reduce its operating costs. Uh, it's stuff like reducing the most heavily used lighting, occupancy sensors, sometimes it's getting maybe the, the kid in your, that's running the front counter to turn the lights off at the right time. Uh, it's all of that. So, next slide, please. Oh. <laughs> we'll see if they come back online. <laughs> all right, we're back. Can you advance one more for me? <laughs> Melissa, if you want to get your uh, slides up just in case, my internet seems to be frustratingly slow, so I apologize. There we go, something came in. All right, so this is the USDA Rural Energy for America program grant. Uh, it is a program under the Department of Agriculture, Federal Department of Agriculture. Uh, in brief, uh, it's a grant program that will cover up to 25% of eligible project costs, which is basically the labor equipment and permitting. It's pretty much everything that, that you can think of that would go into a clean energy project. Uh, it has two deadlines. There are statutory deadlines of October 31st, Halloween, and March 31st. Uh, and the last few years, there's been a, a pretty high award percentage because the number of farms uh, and small businesses that have been applying to the program has been down. So there's more money, I shouldn't say more money, there's the same amount of money to go around for fewer projects. Um, so in terms of eligibility, it's farms, rural small businesses, rural electric cooperatives, and then tribal entities, which is basically pretty much everybody in Otter Tail Power Territory. Um, this is the good news. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, let's see, a couple of dollar numbers. Uh, for efficiency projects, there's a $1,500 minimum. Uh, and for renewable projects, it's a $2,500. I've never seen that be an issue for people. Um, uh, the one thing I do want to note is that if you're applying, you have to show that you have at least 75% of the 
of the project cost covered, either through a loan, which can be through PACE, or through another grant program. Um, and the reason the USDA puts that in place is because they don't want to fund something uh, that suddenly uh, just doesn't go through because the financing doesn't materialize uh, at the, at the start of the project. Um, so that's why PACE and REAP actually work really well together. It's really easy to get a PACE loan to cover a project cost to show that you have the financial backing for that project. And then once you get a REAP grant, uh, that's sort of the icing on the cake. You basically recapture all that money, uh, or a good chunk of it anyway, through a grant. Next slide, please. I uh, will go click one more slide for me. Yes, yeah, so, so REAP grants, they start with the vendor quote. That's always easy. Uh, I won't lie to you, the paperwork um, can be pretty tough for some folks. Um, a good number of them will, will spend some money on a grant writer to help them work through their project. You are always welcome to talk with us at CERTS. Um, I've been through the, the grant application many times uh, and we have different templates and I generally know what number goes where. Uh, and also how to troubleshoot little things like, you know, why is this PDF document not calculating like it should? Uh, so I, I want you to consider me as a resource if you want to try your hand at it. I will say the grant writers that do work on this program, uh, they do a really good job of scoring your project first to see like whether you're going to score high or, you know, what your, more or less what your odds are. And they'll usually do that before they ask for you to, to lay out several hundred dollars primarily for the time to fill out the paperwork. Um, but it's, I, I would tell you that it's, it's a worthwhile investment. You know, it's you know, several hours of time returning you several thousands of dollars. So uh, I, I hope people think of it that way and not so much as a barrier, but like this is the opportunity cost of applying for this grant program. Next slide, please. Uh, quickly moving on to tax matters. Uh, right now, the IRS Section 179D program, the Energy Efficient Commercial Buildings Deduction, is still in place through the end of the year. Uh, it has some technicality to it, but basically it's $1.80 per square foot uh, tax deduction. And you have to do some material things to the building. You have to reduce the, the building energy and power costs by 50%. Um, you know, obviously, you do that through things like you know, Thing, addressing the building envelope, maybe improving the HVAC system through something like uh, an air source heat pump setup. Uh, and it only involves commercial buildings, but I do think this is a great tool to, um, you know, if you have some older buildings in your in your towns, to encourage people to reinvest in those buildings and keep those store storefronts nice and fresh. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, kind of pivoting a little bit back to solar, there's a 26% investment tax credit available if you're if you're pro if your uh, business is interested in some kind of solar project um, that's online through 2020 and then it drops to 22 percent uh, after uh, the holiday season this year um, and uh, that's a really important tool for people that are looking at their solar investment uh, it has a 20-year carry forward period so even if you can't capture that in year one um, you can, might be able to capture that in year two, three, or four. Uh, next slide, please. Solar also qualifies for accelerated depreciation. Uh, it's, a, it's considered five-year, uh, on the five-year property schedule, which means it's, um, there is a bonus depreciation component that is mutually exclusive to the five-year property schedule, but I've never seen anybody use that yet because it requires a high degree of profitability and uh, uh, federal income tax liability. So accelerated depreciation is, is probably familiar to many small businesses because they're able to, to recoup their costs on equipment investments in a faster way than if they depreciated them over like say a 20 year lifespan. Um, but that's also an important component for solar energy. Next slide, please. All right, quickly about jobs since I've just got a couple minutes. Um, uh, you know, Minnesota does have a lot of clean energy jobs. We've got over 61,000. Um, most of them are in energy efficiency, uh, which is great to hear. Like, we always want people to, to work on those operating costs. Uh, and we've got around 13% renewable energy generation uh, and then some other smaller components. Um, obviously, 
COVID did take a chunk out of everybody's kind of job report and knocked off 11,000, over 11,000 clean energy jobs. But uh, I do want people to know that there are, uh, those are great jobs uh, to consider for your community. Next slide, please. Uh, and that's it. I think I'm out of time. Um, I was trying to leave some time for you guys to ask some questions, but uh, thanks for having us this morning. Thank you, Fritz. Uh, if you have any questions, um, folks, feel free to put them in the chat or actually you can also unmute yourself and just ask them. Um, and I have a question. Sure, team, I have a plug for your job board. I actually saw this outer tail position open on your job board. So. Yeah, okay. thank you, Brandon. I was going to say, CERTS, CERTS does have a job board for clean energy jobs. And as Brandon said, that's where we post them. I did want to say one thing. Um, all the programs that we talked about today, about the, the outer tail power rebates, the property plus clean energy rebates, and the Rural Energy for America program grants, those are all stackable. So, uh, and we often see people combine those programs to materially shrink the, the project costs for an energy upgrade or an equipment upgrade. So, um, and we're all friends, which is why we're on this webinar together. So we, we generally know if somebody sends us a project, you know, Brandon or, or um, Lori or Pete knows to call me and vice versa. So. Uh, so we have a question about uh, sending the contact information for the speakers. We will definitely do that and we'll also send out a recording of the webinar um, to folks who registered. Any other questions? I have one maybe for, for anybody who can answer it. Are you finding similar air source heat pump rebates um, in rural electric cooperative territories? I probably can't speak specifically to all the co-ops, but uh, I know the Otter Tail looked very hard at other utility rebates and uh, we have, they're up there with the best in the nation. I think you'd be hard pressed to find heat pump rebates as generous as the ones we are offering this year. Um, just to give you an idea, I personally put in a new cold climate heat pump at my home last year because they had bumped up the rebates to $600 a ton. Had I waited until this year, I would have gotten another $1,000 rebate. So. They really are pretty generous this year. And it, it helps, for me, I felt that it has helped market the idea of getting people on that controlled rate because that in extra incentive on the rebate helps offset the cost of having an electrician come in and putting in that second service panel, which will result in additional energy savings for them because the rates are almost half on the dual fuel from what they are at the general service rates. Not quite, but almost. And we do have a request for uh, Otter Tail Power to contact one of our attendees. Um, so we will connect you guys um, after the webinar. Sure. Yep. Happy to do it. Any last questions? All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Um, we will be sharing this recording out um, for folks who weren't able to make it. Um, this morning um, and enjoy your day. And thanks to the chamber and uh, all the participants. Thank you. Good week. Bye-bye.